What I want to do in this video is explore how trade imbalances, in theory, should be resolved by freely floating currencies. So let's just say at, our, at the beginning of our time period, like we did in the last video, that the exchange rate between the Chinese yuan and the US dollar is 10 to 1. So we have 10 yuan. So the last time people traded these currencies, they exchanged 10 yuan for 1 US dollar. So 1, 1. And when I say dollar, I'm going to implicitly mean the US dollar. Now let's think about two entrepreneurs in each of the countries, or one in each of the countries. So let's talk about a Chinese entrepreneur. So we are in China here, and he makes dolls. He makes dolls. Let me draw one of the dolls. And in order to profitably sell a doll, he needs to sell them for 10 won. So sell, so needs, needs to sell for 10 won. If he's able to sell for the equivalent of 10 won in the United States, and we won't talk a lot about shipping and what currency you would have to pay in and all of that, then he can pay all of his needs. Maybe even the, the shippers across the Pacific, maybe their employees are also Chinese, so they want their money in won. And obviously, most of the cost would be for manufacturing this doll, and all of his employees want to be paid in won. His own rent for the factory, or even his own uh, rent for his own house, it all has to be paid in won. So this is what he needs to sell his doll for, 10 won. And at the current exchange rate, that would be 1 US dollar. Now let's go across the Pacific. Let's go across the Pacific. Let's go to the United States. And let's say that we have another entrepreneur who's making soda or making cola for export. So let me draw a can of cola. Cola. And similar to this guy in China, he needs to sell his product abroad for the equivalent of a dollar so that it can cover shipping costs and manufacturing costs and the high fructose corn syrup and all of that. So needs, needs to sell for, for one US dollar. And once again, he cares about dollars because he has to pay his own mortgage in dollars, his employees need to be paid in dollars, maybe the shippers he uses, they only accept dollars. So this is how both of these characters think about it. Now, at the current exchange rate, so at this current exchange rate, let's say that the demand for these dolls, that there is demand for 100 dolls in China. Or sorry, at the current exchange rate, there is a demand for 100 dolls in the United States. This guy is exporting, and so is this guy. We'll make it a very simple, they're only focused on export. So at, at current exchange, at current, current exchange, and I'll do it for both. There is, for the doll guy, there is demand, there is demand for, demand for 100 100, 100 dolls in the United States. So what does that mean? That means that if you if he can sell these dolls for one dollar, which is equivalent to 10 won, then there's going to be 100 people in some time period, let's say it's a year or a month, who are going to be willing to buy the dolls at that price. And let's say also at this current exchange rate, in China, in China, 50 people are willing to buy this cola. So at the current exchange rate, demand demand for 50 50 cans demand for 50 cans in China obviously these are ridiculously no numbers but we're just dealing with simple numbers to uh, help our thinking and let me write the at current exchange rate as well at current exchange rate current exchange rate so what we're saying is that in China, he needs to get a dollar. At the exchange rate, that's 10 won. So if he, if he were to, at a store in China, or to a distributor in China maybe, sell each of these cans for 10 won, there's demand for 50 cans in China. Now what's going to happen here? I think some of y'all might already see that a trade imbalance is developing. So what's going to happen here? So this guy, he likes doing this, and this guy likes doing it. So what's going to happen? In this time period, this Chinese guy is going to ship over he is going to ship over 100 dolls. So he's going to ship over 100 dolls to the United States. So let me write this down. This is China. This is the US over here. And what's the US going to do? Well, the US is going to ship over. The US is going to ship over. Essentially, he remember, he's selling this in the United States. So each 10 won is $1. So for each doll, he's going to get $1. So he's going to get back $100. He is going to get back 100 
US dollars for his dolls. And then and then once he gets back 100 US dollars for his dolls, he's going to want to convert them into won. So then he will try try to convert the 100 100 dollars into into won. So this is what'll end up happening for this guy. And let's say these are the only two people trading between China and the United States, just to really simplify things. Now let's think about what happens on the right side over here. And this guy is going to sh ship 50 cola cans to China. So we have cola can right over there, cola. He is going to ship 50 of them to China from the United States. And what is he going to get back in return? Well, they're going to, it's being sold to Chinese distributors, so they're going to pay him in yuan. So for each can at the current exchange rate, or at the, at the, at the current price, he's going to get 10 yuan. So when you, when you convert it back, when you convert it, or he's going to get 10 yuan per can. So 10 yuan times 50 is 500 yuan. 500. 500 won is what he's going to get. And then he's going to try to convert, try to convert. Let me write that in a different color just to, just really for the sake of it. So he's going to try to, try to convert, because he has to pay his expenses in dollars, his, his 500 won into, into, now what's the exchange rate that he wants to, his goal is, into, to cover his cost, he has to get 10 to 1. So 500 won into $50. Into 50, into $50. And let me make it clear, this guy thinks he's going to get 10 won for every dollar, so he wants to convert his $100 into 1,000 won. So let me write it here, 1,000. I should have written it over here, but let me write 1,000 won over here. So what just set up? If these are the only people trading goods and currency in this time period, what do we just set up? Well, clearly this guy is shipping more value to the US than this guy is shipping to China. There is a trade imbalance. If you think of it in terms of dollars, this guy is shipping $100 worth of goods to the US. This guy is only shipping $50 worth of goods to China. So there's a net trade imbalance of $50. China's shipping $50 more to the US than the other way around. If you think about it in yuan, it would be a trade imbalance of 500 yuan. And because of that, because of that, this guy is trying to convert many more dollars into yuan than this guy is trying to convert the other way around. Notice there is more demand, more demand, more demand for yuan than dollars. What's going to happen, especially if these are the only two people trading? If these are the only two people trading, this guy is going to say, hey, you know, I've got. I've got 10 won, let me convert it into dollars. And it'll be just like what we saw in the last video. And obviously there'll be more actors here. But whenever you this guy is more this guy has more stuff to convert than this guy. In fact, if these were the only two people trading, he wouldn't even be able to convert all of his currency into into won because there's only 500 won available on the market. This guy thinks he should get a thousand won. And obviously, if the price of the won goes up, like we've seen in the previous video, maybe there'll be more people who want to convert won, or maybe fewer people who'd want to convert dollars. And we can you can think about all of those. But I really want to think about how this will this will potentially resolve the trade imbalance. So we see, we have a situation more demand want more demand for won than dollars. There's a demand for a thousand won here. There's only 500 won being sold, or you could view it the other way. There's only demand for fifty dollars. There's only demand for fifty dollars, and there's a hundred dollars being sold. Either way, there's an imbalance. So what's going to happen? Well, you're going to have you're going to have either, depending on how you want to view it, you could have you could say that the price of the dollar of the dollar will go down, or you could say that the price of the yuan will go up. And the dynamics would be like we saw in the last video. This guy over here would sell a couple of his yuan, and he'd say, wow, there's really a, there's this guy over there who really wants to buy it. And then maybe he'll keep saying, well, you know what, instead of, instead of, uh, instead of giving me 
instead of giving me a uh, dollar for every 10 of my won, why don't you give me a dollar for every nine of my won? Or eventually, why don't you give me a dollar for every eight of my won? And so he'll keep raising the price of the won. He'll, he'll, keep, he'll keep giving fewer and fewer wands for each of the dollar. And let's say this goes on for a little bit. And I really want to explore the trade imbalance. Let's say at some point, and obviously maybe more and more people come into the market, so eventually it clears, because right now there isn't enough won for this guy. But as you can see, the price of the won goes up. So after all of this, because of this trade imbalance, because more people want to convert dollars into won than won into dollars, the currency changes. So you could imagine, and I'm just going to make up some numbers here, that the won becomes more expensive. It was 10 won to the dollar. Now maybe it is 8. 8 won. 8 won to dollar. 8 won to dollar. So this is where we get to eventually. Get to eventually because of this. Supply demand imbalance right over here. Eight want to the dollar. Now what's the reality over here? This guy over here, this guy over here, he needs to sell his dolls for ten won, which before was the equivalent of one dollar. But now how much is he going to sell his won for? How he needs to sell for ten won. Now it's eight won per dollar, right? So let's 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 think about how much his dolls cost. So his dolls in the US, now that the won has appreciated. They were 10 won, 10 won, and then times we have one dollar, one dollar for every eight, for every eight won. So this is going to be equal to the wands cancel out. This is really just dimensional analysis you might have learned in chemistry. So 10 over eight is what? That's one and one fourth. This is a dollar 25. So this is 1.25 dollars. Notice. The price of his dolls went up in the United States in terms of dollars. And let's think about what happened to the cola manufacturer. The cola manufacturer right over here. Cola. So his cost, or the price he needs to sell them for, are $1. $1. And now what's the exchange rate? $1. Let me write it the other way, because I need to cancel out the dollars. We have 8 won, 8 won for every $1. For every one dollar, dollars cancel out. Eight times one. He'll now the, his selling price in the in in China will now be eight won. Will now be eight won. So notice, neither of these people changed their prices in terms of their home currency. No change in price at all. But because of the currency movements, because the yuan became more expensive, this guy's goods, the Chinese manufacturer's goods, are now more expensive in dollars. And the American manufacturer's goods are now less expensive in yuan. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen here? At a dollar, there was a demand for $100 in the United States. But now that the price has gone up, now that the price has gone up to $1.25, now there will only be demand, demand. Now there will only be demand. Let's say they're now at this higher price. Now there's only demand for fifty dolls, fifty dolls, in the United States. And let's say this guy over here. Before there was demand for fifty cans of his cola in China because it was ten wands. But now the price has gone down. So let now you can imagine that there is demand. Or actually, I should say there's demand for fifty dolls, not fifty. There's demand for fifty dolls. And now, because this guy's price has gone down, now instead of demand for 50 cans, maybe there's demand for, and I'll just make up a number, 80 cans. Maybe there's now demand for 80 cans. So what just happened to the trade imbalance? Before, in terms of either currency, we were buying more dolls, and if you think about it from the US perspective, and shipping fewer cola. But now that has no, that that we're we're buying fewer dolls because it's now more expensive in the United States, and we're shipping more cola. So I don't even know how this math works. I don't know. I'll let you figure that out. But as one currency gets more and more expensive, those exports, the demand for those exports from those countries are going to go down, like we saw with these dolls. And on the other side, as the other currency gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, the demand for those exports will go up because in other currencies. It will look cheaper. And eventually, you should have some type of trade balance.